What should have been a celebratory tweet about Ghost of Tsushima and how well it sold sort of became a little bit of a drama minefield for Sony in the last few days. Let's talk about what happened as a Days Gone developer has claimed that their game actually sold better than Ghost of Tsushima, but was largely pandered. Let's get into it. Before I tell you about the story, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell to know when these videos go live. Thank you so much for watching. So right away, let's show the original tweet here. Uh, the original tweet was from uh, Sucker Punch Productions as they were celebrating that their game has sold 8 million copies. A tremendous feat. Uh, we're thrilled and amazed that Ghost of Tsushima has officially sold more than 8 million copies. Thank you so much to everyone who has played since launch. We are so incredibly appreciative and grateful for the support. So before I go further into this video, I do want to say congratulations to Sucker Punch. That is a tremendous achievement. And nothing that I say is particularly me throwing shade at Sucker Punch or anything. Ghost of Tsushima is a fantastic game. But I want to talk about the reaction from a, another former employee who worked on Days Gone to this, uh, sort of unfortunately taking the wind out of the sails a little bit to Ghost of Tsushima, but there's a little more to this story that I'm also gonna get to in a second. So Jeff Ross, Jeff Ross has been quite vocal about his uh, his issues with, with Sony and such. He said, at the time I left Sony, Days Gone had been out for a year and a half and a month, so a year and seven months and sold over 8 million copies. It's since gone on to sell more, and then a million plus on Steam. Local studio management always made us feel like it was a big disappointment, which is really, really unfortunate because I, I know there's a lot of people out there who actually quite enjoyed Days Gone. So it's, it's always disappointing for me to hear that uh, a developer was made to feel bad about a game that actually did quite well. But before I go any further and read some of his other quotes, I do want to talk about um, something that he revealed later after that tweet that you might have missed. So he said that the game sold 8 million copies, but his source for that information was a trophy tracking website that has since shut down. This is according to GameSpot. As reported by Push Square, Ross shared the info on David Jaffe's YouTube channel. Given the nature of the data, it is possible that sales were not, in fact, in excess of 8 million copies on PS4, as trophy data may include things like multiple users who play a single copy. As a result, it's unclear just how well the game did, in fact, sell. It's unclear, but I, I do think I would say that the game at least sold well. I mean, if 8 million people unlocked trophies in it, at the very least, 8 million people played the game, though those may not all be sales. Let's say a million of those aren't sales. I think that's a reasonable amount, just to sort of guess. So let's say it still did 7 million. It is unfortunate to hear that uh, they felt that way. And I, I saw a tweet come out a few days later, or a, a clip from the show come out a few days later, where Ross said, as soon as Sean Layden was gone, Days Gone was dead. And actually, one of the things that they had done after Days Gone, uh, after Sony had passed on Days Gone 2, according to this Kotaku report from the same video with, uh, with uh, David Jaffe, they pitched an open world resistance reboot. This reboot, the studio was asked about making a siphon filter reboot, but that didn't happen either. So they were pitching all these other ideas that were just getting shot down. Former Ben Studio director Jeff Ross recently, re recently, Jeff Ross revealed that he pitched an open world resistance sequel after Sony made it clear that it had no interest in a Days Gone 2, which is rather unfortunate because I think it has shown after the passage of time that a lot of people actually enjoyed Days Gone more than we would have originally thought. There were also talks of a new Siphon Filter reboot, but none of these projects made it very far, according to Ross in a new interview with David Jaffe. On his live stream, he talked about how it was an uphill battle, and ultimately, uh, the studio failed to convince Sony the idea would work before Ross left Ben in 2020 after 20 years, or nearly 20 years. It was very obvious that we shouldn't be talking about Days Gone when we were working on the pitch for Ben's next game, explained Ross. It was clear that it was a non-starter, and there was nothing in the pitch that made the local manager and his boss feel good about it. He later added that it seems Sony was interested in nearly anything but Days Gone 2. Uh, it's really, really, it, like I said, it's just unfortunate that 
you know, this studio really, really believed in Days Gone 2. They talked about a few other games that they wanted to create. Those were all shot down. And I, I think I can understand why Jeff Ross might have wanted to leave after all that. I don't know if that was part of it or why Jeff Ross ended up leaving in the end. But um, he's he clearly seems very upset about everything that ended up taking place. The pitch I was making was open world resistance. The pitch I was making was open world resistance would be effing rad, said Ross. There were all these open world loops that we figured out. It also wrote itself with resistance. There were so many aspects of that property that lent itself to open world gameplay. Uh, he also talked about siphon filter. Um, Ross didn't feel like this was a genuine plan at the time. It was almost like a keep them busy type question. Hey, guys. Why don't you come up with something for Siphon Filter while we figure out what we're confident in pitching? So I didn't think it was ever genuine, he told Jaffe. Uh, so he, they go on this. Sorry, I'm just trying to look for the quotes here. But basically, a lot of the other things that I talked about, how they were made to sort of feel like the game was a disappointment. And uh, that's really, really unfortunate. One thing about all of this, though, if you actually go and look, you can see that Sean Layden actually responded to Jeff Ross's original tweet. And he says, congratulations, always thought it was an ambitious and impressive title, The Hordes. It was a real privilege to be there on launch day. Will not forget. I actually remember when this was revealed and the technology involved was just like all these ma this massive just swath of zombies cascading across the landscape, just flooding into an area, and you have to figure out how to deal with them. That was basically the pitch when they showed it on stage, and it was actually kind of exciting. I think, for me anyway, I think the biker aspect was the one where <laughs> I think, I don't know, like if 8 million people still played the game, maybe even I, I played it a little bit too. I didn't play too much, but I, there's a lot of interesting mechanics there in the launch game, and um the pitch was really, really cool, but I guess it just didn't do well enough for Sony. And there's often these very strange situations where like Square, a Square Enix game will do tremendously well. And then they're just like, well, it didn't meet our sales expectations. So whatever. Very happy to see the support from Sean Layden. And um, yeah. So Jeff Ross went on to say one last thing. Uh, he was responding to one of the, the Twitter comments. Anything related to the rumor about the sequel pitch being turned down? First game was good. I don't like zombie games, but this one, I like it. I really thought a second game would benefit from the studio learning lessons left by the first one and improving on every aspect. Exactly. I was planning on building on top of the original for a kick-ass sequel. Even the first kill zone got a 70 on Metacritic, but the sequel roared back with a 91. You got to crawl before you can walk and walk before you can run. So... You know, the first game, it's them learning the, the engine, learning how to make the game, and they were very confident in a sequel, but unfortunately, we'll never we'll never know what that is going to be. Anyway, that was that story. So uh, Jeff Ross calling out Sony is a little, little bit off with his data, I think, but uh, it's very, very clear he's very disappointed about Days Gone, as he has been on record multiple times saying, and I think the... Uh, the success of Ghost of Tsushima kind of made him say like, hey, I thought we were successful too. Like, what's up with that? So that's the story. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please consider hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell to know when they go live. I do appreciate you watching. If you want to become a member, memberships are turned on. Thank you so much to all the members. I see some, I see Jeff, you're a new member. Thank you so much. I see the regulars are still there. Thank you to all the regulars. If you want to become a member, click that join button. I'm going to get out of here and I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.